Hi, this is Chris from Build Five Nines. Let's take a look at the Microsoft Certified Azure IoT Developer Certification. In this video, we'll take a look at some reasons to get certified and why you might want to get certified in IoT or Azure IoT specifically. Then we'll look at the target audience as well as the exam objectives for this particular exam. And then we'll wrap it up by looking at some recommended prerequisites that I have for things you should learn before attempting this exam or even certifications to earn previous. And then also some study tips to help you be more efficient on your way. Let's dive in. So why would you want to get certified as an Azure IoT developer? Certifications in general can lead to an increase in pay as well as new career opportunities. Certifications offer trusted and verified credentials that you can use to prove your expertise. Certifications allow you to become a leader so you can speak as an authority with your expertise within your team and organization. Certifications also lead to higher productivity. The increased expertise leads to greater efficiency in building solutions. Now, some statistics from the Microsoft IoT Signals report published in 2019 show that 94% of businesses responded will be using IoT within the next two years. And the overall success of IoT adoption showing that 88% say that IoT adoption is critical to the overall success of their business. Nearly all decision makers are satisfied with IoT, most likely because they believe it has a strong return on investment or ROI. There's an overall high demand for IoT talent in the industry. The lack of talent and training present challenges for almost half of IoT adopters. In this relatively new field, it's hard to find workers with the right skills and expertise. Roughly 47% of companies that have adopted IoT report that they don't have enough skilled workers. The Microsoft IoT Signals report also includes some top IoT challenges for adopting IoT solutions. Among the top three are complexity and technical challenges, lack of budget and staff resources, and overall lack of knowledge. We can see that a lack of expertise and experience are definitely the three biggest challenges seen by many organizations on adopting IoT. We can see at the bottom of the five are haven't found the right IoT solutions, still evaluating maybe what they want to use, what technologies to use. Some of the increased expertise and trained staff would probably help with this as well. And then security is a concern. The Flexera 2020 State of the Cloud report also shows that IoT is the top growing cloud service area, showing growth from 2019 to 2020 to continue on after. The other things in the cloud that are the top growing areas are containers, machine learning, data warehouse, and serverless, all of which will likely be utilized in some fashion with many IoT solutions. Let's take a look at the target audience now for the Azure IoT Developer Certification Exam. So the target role for an Azure IoT developer is going to be somebody who creates and maintains the cloud and edge components of an IoT solution. They'll be configuring IoT devices using Azure Cloud Services, setting up physical IoT devices to connect to local networks as well as to the cloud, and they'll be maintaining IoT devices throughout the development lifecycle. The job tasks of an Azure IoT developer include implementing IoT solution design, maybe a design that was provided by an architect on the team, including device topology, connectivity, networking, debugging, security of those devices. They'll be deploying compute resources in the cloud, as well as locally on the edge device using technologies such as containers even. They'll be configuring the device networking, connecting those devices to the local network, as well as connecting them to the cloud and to the internet overall, and implementing solutions to manage data pipelines as well. This will include monitoring and data transformation. Leading into the need for the Azure IoT developer to work with data engineers and other stakeholders for successful business integration beyond the actual IoT devices themselves and into the full solution. The technology focus areas for this certification exam are going to look at the Azure services that are used for IoT solutions. These will include storage services, data analysis, and data processing services, as well as other platform as a service or past services in Azure. There's also a coding aspect to the focus on the exam with IoT coding requiring you to be familiar with at least one Azure supported language, such as C-sharp, Node.js, C, or Python. It's good to note that this exam is not device specific. It is really a device agnostic exam. 
It's testing you and verifying your expertise and building the Azure side of the cloud solution. And on the device, you'll be using the SDKs to interact with the device, but it's not going to test specific devices. Now, the exam objectives of the Azure IoT Developer Certification exam include a few areas as would be used by an Azure IoT developer. We can see here percentages listed by each objective area to show how much of the exam is covered in that specific area. And it's pretty well spread across the different areas. So implement the IoT solution infrastructure, representing roughly 15 to 20% of the exam. Provision and manage devices, about 20 to 25% of the exam. Implementing edge, so this would be the IoT edge compute piece, so roughly 15 to 20% of the exam. Processing and managing data, being 15 to 20% of the exam. Monitoring, troubleshooting, and optimizing IoT solutions, roughly 15 to 20% of the exam. And the last area, implementing security, roughly 15 to 20% of the exam, with a fairly good focus on security, as is definitely warranted to make sure that IoT solutions are secured properly, in addition to all of the other edge data and integrations that will be done. So looking through the exam objective domains, for implement the IoT solution infrastructure, this includes creating and configuring an IoT hub, building device messaging and communications, as well as configuring physical IoT devices. The next objective area, provision and manage devices, includes implementing the device provisioning service to provision and manage devices at scale, managing the device lifecycle from creating the device to managing to retiring it, managing IoT devices using Azure IoT Hub, as well as building out a solution utilizing the SaaS service IoT Central. The next objective, implementing Edge, looks at the implementation of Azure IoT Edge from setting up and deploying IoT Edge devices, developing modules that run on those devices, as well as configuring an Azure IoT Edge device. And then processing and managing data is going to look at configuring routing in Azure IoT Hub to be able to send those messages from your devices out to Stream Analytics, Cosmos DB, other places. And then configuring stream processing using particularly Azure Stream Analytics for that as well as configuring an IoT solution for time series insights. And monitoring, troubleshooting, and optimizing IoT solutions is going to cover a wide area of features within the different services covered by the other sections, looking at configuring health monitoring for your devices and your solution, troubleshooting device communications, as well as performing end-to-end -end solution testing and diagnostics. And then the last objective area, implementing security, is going to look at some of the different security features of all the different services covered in other sections, such as implementing device authentication in Azure IoT Hub using, say, password authentication or X509 certificate authentication, implementing device security using Azure Device Provisioning Service, or DPS, as well as integrating Azure Security Center using the Azure Security Center for IoT functionality. Now, before you attempt the Azure IoT Developer Certification, I do have some recommendations on prerequisites. Just to get this straight so that there's no confusion, the AZ220 exam, the Azure IoT Developer Specialty exam, does not actually have any prerequisites that are hard from Microsoft. You can take this exam standalone. You don't have to take any other exams or earn any other certifications previous to attempting this certification exam and earning the certification once you pass this exam. However, I do have some recommended prerequisites that you'll want to learn, look into, and study before attempting this certification exam, as it will definitely help your preparation for becoming an Azure IoT Developer Specialist. I recommend you have a working knowledge of Azure, so be very familiar with creating and managing services, have a basic understanding of Azure IaaS as well as past services, and then also be familiar with the Azure CLI. And then as a developer, you should have working knowledge of programming IoT devices using one of those Azure supported languages, so C Sharp, Node.js, C, or Python, as well as utilizing Visual Studio Code as an editor. Then going further beyond my recommended prerequisites into certifications that I recommend earning first is the Azure Fundamentals certification. I recommend you take this certification or at least learn all of the things that were covered by the certification, as this will give you a good foundation if you are new to Azure the Microsoft Certified Azure Developer Associate Certification is going to help give you a very well-rounded set of expertise and knowledge about Azure services from a developer perspective. While this is not required, 
it is strongly recommended and it will definitely make you a better Azure IoT developer by having both of these developer certifications in the end. Now, when you're studying and preparing for the certification exam, let's take a look at some study tips. I do recommend that you use multiple sources for studying. So instruction with demos, so watching videos or taking an instructor-led course, things like that, as well as hands-on labs. You wanna get in there hands-on practical experience using the services, configuring devices, and doing the different activities that are going to be tested on the exam. And then also another source would be documentation, articles, or books that you could read to cover all the material multiple times to help retain it. And then to reiterate, you should get hands-on with the technologies. I recommend doing hands-on labs at minimum one time, if not two or three times, just to really drill in and get familiar with the activities that are performed and the different hands-on labs that you might find to do. You wanna get familiar with working with the services, writing code, managing devices, and other tasks that would be required on this certification. Overall, you want to perform some kind of a self-assessment while you're studying for the certification. You want to look at the different exam objective areas and skills covered. You certainly want to reference the officially published objective domains. Those may be different over time if they change than what I have listed in this video. You want to go through each item listed in the skills covered and make sure that you're comfortable with each specific topic. Any topic that you're not familiar with, you may get a question on that and that could cause you to fail the exam. A tool that I've built along with another contributor to Build 5.9s, uh, Dan Patrick, the two of us built this free exam self-assessment tooling. These are spreadsheets at the moment. They may be another form in the future. If you go to the URL here on the slide, I will also put it in the description of the video. You can march each topic with your confidence level and then assess the total confidence level of all of the exam objective areas and skill areas before you go and attempt the exam. This will help you know whether you've studied each area on the exam, how well you feel about it, and help give you some confidence to go and take the exam. Now, taking the exam. If you fail, that's perfectly okay. It's normal to fail exams. A lot of people do. Some people pass on the first time, some people pass the second or even third time. Just remember, you can take the exam again. After the exam, you will get a summary report of how well you scored on each of the exam areas. You can use this to help prepare the next time you go and attempt the exam. I hope this information is helpful for you. If you're thinking about pursuing the Azure IoT Developer Specialty Certification, or if you're already on your way. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.